work with artists to invade our public spaces and stage inspiring and entertaining events that bring a smile and live in the memory. We think that Toronto should be making better use of its public spaces. Let's see how another major North American city handles its art in public spaces. This, of course, is Chicago. And this spectacular piece of art is by Anish Kapoor, one of the greatest artists in the world. He lives in Britain. Do you know that we have an Anish Kapoor right in our city? Look closely. It's there somewhere. See it? It's behind the trees at the back. There is a work by one of the world's greatest artists displayed Toronto style. Now let's look at this wonderful, whimsical public art installation also in Chicago. It's a work by the Spanish artist, Joan Plenza. It's a mosaic of a thousand pictures of residents of the city and every 30 seconds or so, it spits out a spout of water. Now we have our own Joan Plenza here. And here it is. Do you know where it is? The red panels adjacent to the baggage carousel at Pearson International Airport. So here are a few ideas that we at 66 Ideas Incorporated have for giving our public spaces a wow factor. Now we've all seen chalk used in public spaces for a variety of reasons. The artist on the right, Julian Beaver, specializes in dramatic three-dimensional art. One of the great things about chalk is that you don't have to be a Julian Beaver to express yourself with it. This image is of the tremendous outpouring of affection for Jack Layton, all done with chalk, which was seen around the world. Totally unscripted, totally spontaneous, all chalk. Here's an idea. Closing down Young Street from Bloor Street south to college. Filling it with children, artists, politicians, hockey players, whoever, all of you. And create together the world's largest chalk drawing. Let's put Toronto on the map with a Guinness World Record. Now, what you see here is the world's longest chalk drawing done in London, England last year. Now, believe it or not, all of that is on a flat surface. We want to do it here. Another chalk project we want to do is recreate the Sistine Chapel ceiling indoors. We would have a webcam and a website for people to see how it's progressing and we would invite art students, artists of all kinds to participate. There are not a bunch of you here, I'm sure you'd love to do it. The old planetarium next to the ROM is one of our possibilities. And here's another way to transform not only public spaces, but buildings in public spaces into something attractive, imaginative, and something that may make people smile and say, wow. We propose this to Illuminato this year. Now the upper left uh, of this slide is a building in Vienna. It's a museum. And um, it's pretty boring and totally colorless by daylight, but look what Lucette de Rougy, one of the great artists, projection artists of the world, did for it at night. Brilliant. British illumination artist Ross Ashton transformed the classic facade of Cambridge University into images that were colorful, striking, and very contemporary. Imagine what we could do with some of the Gothic buildings at the University of Toronto. Building illuminations uh, don't have to be on a grand scale to be effective. Look at this elegant colonial style building in Kobe, Japan. Check out the intricate detail and shading of every part of the, fa of, of the facade. In the smallest picture, you can see how the building looks in daylight. But public spaces are not always outdoors. Just go to any mall. They can be pretty deadly artistically. 
This slide shows what was done with the interior of Cologne Cathedral. Can you imagine something similar in our own St. James or St. Mike's Cathedral? Isn't that spectacular? Um, here's a part of the city that most Torontonians, most of you are familiar with. Blur Street between Avenue Road and Young. It's called by some the Mink Mile and $20 million was recently spent on sidewalks and plantas, but the ugly co concrete buildings remain. And anchoring the Milk Mile, Mink Mile at Blur and Young Street sits the Hudson's Bay Company, located inside one of the most unattractive buildings in the city. Does this look like a friendly, fun place to shop? Well, here's an idea we have pitched to the Bay. This is uh, how it could look if Frank Stella got a hold of it. Now it says, wow. The building has been transformed into a colorful, welcoming Blue Street landmark. British artist Damien Hurst would add another different look, but one that tells the shoppers on Bloor Street that Canada's oldest company is modern, contemporary, and cool, something the building certainly does not communicate now. And here's our favorite. Now, wouldn't that make you smile if you were one of the 200,000 people a day who cross the intersection of Bloor and Bay, wouldn't or Bloor and Young, wouldn't that just brighten up your day? Public art can be inspiring and entertaining. It should, as we believe, bring a smile and live 